Oh, hello YouTubers, thanks for joining me. I'm just about to start the Offers Dyke National Trail. I'm at the start uh, here at Sedbury Cliffs, overlooking the Severn Estuary with the bridges down there. So heading back into Chepstow and onwards up to um, possibly Monmouth, uh, the first stage, up the Wye Valley. So it's a 177 mile long trail that uh, ends up at Prestatin. So, see if you can uh, come along with me and uh, we'll see how we get along over the next 10 or 12 days. So I'm just approaching a bit of a viewpoint here. It's called Wintour's Leap. Escaped pursuers leaping into the river. Well, good luck to him. Whoa, that is some drop. Anyway, that's the uh, River Y. What a great day! I'm about maybe three miles out of Chepstow. Got a nice view of the Severn Estuary over the fields. That was Tintin Abbey, just a little uh, glimpse of it, and uh, back into the woodland. Oh, it's very picturesque around here. I'm still in the Y Valley, still walking, heading slowly towards Bigsweir, I think. And the way is down. Well, it's uh, 20 past five on day one from Chepstow up the Wye Valley towards uh, Monmouth. But it's, uh, I'm a long way from Monmouth. Uh, the next place is Redbrook, which is maybe a couple of more miles away. I mean, the Cad Cardona or Cadrona Woods, very pleasant. There's only a couple of places where I've come across water uh, and that was a good few miles back uh, but I haven't seen any since and that's the main issue at the moment I've run out of water it's been a hot day anyway I'll see if I can get something in Redbrook which is somewhere over there Well, this is a nice view. Got a view of the Y Valley down there. And I think away in the distance that must be Monmouth. I might just make it, but we'll see. Anyway, back on the path. So it's a quarter to eight, been a bit of a long day. I'm just arriving at the Kaimin. Uh, don't know much about it, so I won't uh, blag my way around this, but uh, nice view across Monmouth there and the uh, Brecon Beacons beyond. So my priority is to head down 
and uh, find somewhere to camp. So day two begins in Monmouth, heading towards Pandy. Uh, lovely sunny morning, nice and warm. There's the uh, River Menno, and that's the um, the Menno Bridge, which is quite a spectacle. So I'm heading in that direction. See you on the trail. So for the purposes of context, who was offer? Um, apparently this um, offer's dike is an earthworks that's the biggest of its kind in the country. Uh, I read somewhere back on an information board that it's about 80 miles worth of um, dike and ditch. The dike was about eight meters high and then the ditch was on the Welsh side I understand. Offer was the king of Mercia um, in the 8th century I believe and it's reckoned that he built the dike in about 780 AD uh, Anglo-Saxon times um, as a way of defining the western boundary of Mercia, one of the bigger kingdoms in England and uh, providing a boundary between Wales and Mercia. So that's the, the dike as I understand it and uh, there's history all the way along it. Wow, I'm sure they're docile but I'm glad I'm not in that field. I don't see many cattle like this where I come from in Northern England. They're a kind of blonde colour with a distinctive kind of black markings around the hoof and around the nose. But of course these really big horns. That's a lovely field full of buttercups. So apparently this area is this area is known for um, apple and pear growing. So I'm just about to enter um, an orchard, apple orchard. This looks nice through the gate. Apparently for the making of cider, which would be nice. <laughs> Where the path go? Aha, there's our sign. So we go up here. This is a this is the first. I wonder whether these are apples or pears. Anyway, they're destined for some sort of cider. Probably apples, aren't they? An interesting little corner of Monmouthshire. We'll tumble down barns and in this case it's called the Cider House at Coombe Farm. And it looks like there's some funding being made available to do it up. Well that's been a long day but I'm dropping down now to Pandy and I can see the start of tomorrow's uh, walk up over the tops there so uh, that's uh, 
on the itinerary for tomorrow anyway we'll get down to Pandy now call it a day there good morning all uh, day three begins heading to Heon Wai uh, that's the objective I think if I can get there via the um, Hattero Ridge which is rising up in front of us a bit daunting at this time this early point in the day. Anyway, there it is. We're heading up there somewhere. I've just paused here a while because I'm really struck by this massive tree. Uh, I think it's an oak tree. Yeah, it's an oak tree. But it's massive. And uh, looks like Somebody's had a go at decorating it. Can't believe how big some of the trees. I mean, I've passed quite a few trees that are, are this sort of size. They're massive things. Huh. There's my hand for scale. Well, that was a hell of a climb with a backpack on, that's for sure. But uh, I'm on Hattero Ridge now and uh, the going is pretty good and the views are fantastic all the way across Montgomeryshire and presumably Herefordshire over there. Ah, amazing. Good views that way. Nice bubbly clouds. But, um, uh-oh. I think, I think we're in for a drenching at some point in the day. Maybe those clouds will miss at the moment. But uh, yeah, there's the, uh, there's the trig point. So I'm gonna head up there, keep going. to Hay Bluff, right on the edge of the Black Belt, just about to descend down into Hay on Wai. Nice cairn. Well, that's the first proper view of Hay on Wai down there. Uh, so I'll get a few bits and pieces, resupply, and then find some camping. And that's uh, the end point for day three. Welcome to day four. The weather has changed from this insert picture to this. Ooh. So, oh, day four is all about Hergest Ridge and heading towards Knighton or is it Kington? Anyway, breakfast and then pack away and head off. See you on the trail. I'm just leaving Hay on Wye and the path takes you along the River Wye uh, past the sort of um, huts which look quite interesting big veranda there overlooking the river there's a few of them behind me and across the river there you've got the um, preparations for the Hay on Wai uh, festival which is on the 26th to the 5th of June um, so that's obviously what all the uh, activities for over there
think this is uh, New Church, descending into New Church. You can see the, the church over there. Weather's cleared up a little bit. Well, here's a bit of trail magic. I mean, uh, New Church. And uh, there's all the facilities here. There's a little kettle over there, water supply tea and coffee by the looks of things uh, so and it's just started to really pour down so I'm just quite happy to be here for the moment ah things are beginning to shape up again the weather's perking up I'm heading up out of New Church up this hill can't just remember the name of it anyway I'm so pleased that the uh, skies are clearing because the views are opening up again, which is great. Nearly at the top, I think. So just traversing round uh, Disgwilfa Hill and uh, great views across Shropshire and Herefordshire. Uh, the views are really opening up. And over there, I think must be Hergest Ridge, which is the um, the ridge leading down to Kington. So if you are a fan of Mike Oldfield, the musician, you will know that after his first ultra successful LP he sought sanctuary uh, to regain his inspiration his musical muse in the backwaters of Powys where we are now so why is all that significant? it's because this is Hergist Ridge and that became the title of his second very popular LP I remember buying it I think hmm I would have been about 16 or 17 both Tubular Bells and Hergist Ridge both instrumental uh, bits of music but if you haven't heard of them Go and have a look. But this is Mike Oldfield country. Really nice panorama from up here. Sorry about the wind noise, it is very exposed. You see all the way back to uh, the edge of the Black Mounts over there. That's Hay Bluff, Hay on Wild over in the valley beyond. Disil Gua Mountain that I came across this afternoon and now up on Herges Ridge and over here away over in the distance I'm pretty sure they are the Malvern Hills uh, let's get the camera steady just to the um, left of the tree there they're away over in Worcestershire Well, good morning all, it's uh, day five I'm just leaving Kington heading towards Knighton and straight away there's quite a steep climb up onto the tops uh, stayed in the campsite last night which was really nice all the facilities there including for the first time an ability to charge your electrical stuff just in the uh, laundry room there's a couple of sockets so I was able to charge my power brick my phone and the camera elsewhere walls are blank in other campsites just fused spurs so they've really nailed down the 
illicit use of electric which well, I suppose I can understand the cost of electric anyway I'm fully charged but uh, a little bit late starting I looked at my watch it was normally when I look at my watch for the first time it's about four or five o'clock so I go back to sleep and then it's seven o'clock and I get up but today it was <laughs> ten past eight and I'm a bit slow today it's well gone ten o'clock and I'm just heading off anyway it doesn't matter I'm on holiday so that's the way we'll see you on trail well that's a quintessentially rural pastoral scene something that constable might have painted big tree track leading up into the hills and uh, sheep on the trail I feel guilty having to move them no doubt they will move when I approach them Peanut butter. Look at the energy. So just uh, as I approach this little forest here and head into it, there's quite a nice view back, although it's a bit uh, bleak and grey looking. But you can see in the distance Her Hergus Bridge. Um, try and point it out with the um, Chilean pine copse on the top there. And then today I've come from Kington, which is over there, and around and up through this forest just 10 minutes ago. It's sort of drizzly, but uh, bearable a bit cool but it is only the end of May and uh, heading into another little forested area offers a bit of shelter Well, I think this is probably the clearest bit of um, Offers Dyke that I've seen so far, if if that's what it is. You've got the dyke on one side and the ditch pretty clear, and it goes all the way up the um, way that I've just come down. So here's where we are, a place called Pampoontom, just outside Knighton. Knighton's uh, over there behind the trees. And uh, I'm going to be staying in the, the backpacker's barn, which is up here. These are the um, facilities to shower, toilet, sink and tap, etc. light but there's a couple of beds it genuinely is a barn by the look of it no animals in it at the minute 
But anyway, it says we put in the tent up at this time. I'm quite late arriving here, it's about, uh, <coughs> what time is it now? It's quarter to seven. So this is where I'm going to set myself up. See you in the morning. Morning all, this is day six and I'm heading from, <laughs> I'm heading from Knighton to um, the Blue Bell Inn at Brompton Bridge, or around, around about that area. Morning all, it's the start of day six and I'm heading from Knighton up the uh, first hill of the day, Pampunton Hill. Uh, it's said in the guidebook that this is the toughest stage of the trail. Um, so we'll see. Apparently it goes up and down the Shropshire Hills. Uh, quite a lot of steep but relatively short climbs and also steepish descents. And judging by the first uh, few paces, yeah, that's likely going to be the case. Anyway, we'll see how we get on. I'm just approaching uh, Coombe Sanahan Hill, uh, which is just over here. Looks a bit of a climb. You can see the trail going across here, and I think it traverses round somewhere up past those trees, up to the trig point. A very nice view across to the uh, to the valley below. Uh, railway viaduct over there and what I'm seeing a few of <coughs> uh, which is really nice are these uh, red kites just we don't have them up in Cumbria but they're fantastic to see there's one actually just over there probably can't pick it up with the camera but they just soar on the um, on the wind and the thermals they're beautiful birds well that's me reached the top of this little peak, trick point, and if you look over there uh, you can see fairly clearly where the Offers Dyke Trail runs, all the way up there, <laughs> following that big hedge line. Fantastic viewpoint. All the way back to Knighton. There we go, 360. I'm just coming down past uh, Spring Hill Farm a lovely view opening up in front of us <coughs> uh -huh, There's style to climb There's our symbol And that's where we're going. Well, just down there, uh, standing out rather, is a very yellow house. But I've noticed just above it, there's another little yellow house. So I wonder if one has thought, well, they've got a yellow house, so we'll have a yellow house. Anyway, I know that this was pointed out on Ambling Trails uh, video of Offers Dyke. So go and have a look at that. It's a very nice series. Anyway, we're heading down and then back up by the looks of things. So I've just, uh, I don't know if it's focusing, but I'm, I'm leaving this little area where, well, nearest village is Newcastle, just coming up onto the hill. And for the first time, I've located a water tap so there is a 
working water tap as of end of May 2022. where I find the uh, trekking poles really useful. Really quite steep coming down here but it's almost like an extra pair of legs. <laughs> anyway, I'm heading down the hill to a place called Churchtown. So uh, we'll see what that has to offer. On we go. Nice big yew tree there. Anyway, I'm going to take the opportunity to uh, have a sit down and have a drink of water, have a rest. Uh, it's quite hot at the moment, really pleasant to uh, change from yesterday. Right, take a break. So I'm just having a little break. I've found a, a shady spot in the porch way of the church. I'm down, if I can just try and show you, I'm here at um, Church Town and the path goes kind of relentlessly north, it doesn't contour around anywhere, it just goes straight up and over and this page is just full, I don't know if you can see, <laughs> just full of contour lines and uh, there's a few steep sections yet to come. I'm hoping to get to at least um, Brompton Bridge, which is here. So it's three o'clock now. I'll rest a little longer and then head off. reached the top and good views from up here worth the effort <coughs> I think that's where we've come from today way over there those those trees over there So it's now the end of day six and I've made it to a place called Mellington Hall which is the uh, hall just behind me. It's a big static and tourer caravan park but they do have a little area here for campers. Uh, so £13 a night which is okay uh, right next to a facilities block and uh, it's a hotel as well, so I guess you could get uh, food here and drinks and stuff. But I'm camped right next to this little pond. Just going to get set up and then that'll be it for the day. So it was during this stage that um, I reached the halfway point of the Offers Dyke Trail. So we'll draw this part of the video to a conclusion. Thanks ever so much for watching. If you haven't already, please uh, like and subscribe to my channel. If you've got any comments, please leave them below and we'll see you in part two, which will follow once I've got the material edited. Bye for now.